Honorable Speaker, I present the budget for 2023-2024. This is the first budget in Amrit Kal. This budget hopes to build on the foundation laid in the previous budget and the blueprint drawn for India at 100. We envision a prosperous and inclusive India in which the fruits of development will reach all sections and citizens, especially our youth, women, farmers, OBCs, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. In the 75th year of our independence, the world has recognized the Indian economy as a bright star. Our current year's economic growth is estimated to be at 7%. It is notable that this is the highest among all the major economies. This is in spite of the massive slowdown globally caused by COVID-19 and the war. The Indian economy is therefore on the right track and despite a time of challenges, heading towards a bright future. Today, as Indians stand with their head held high and, their world, and the world appreciates India's achievements and successes, we are sure that elders who had fought for India's independence will with joy bless us in our endeavors going forward as well. Our focus on wide-ranging reforms and sound policies implemented through Sabka Prayas resulting in Jan Bagidari and targeted support to those in need helped us perform well in trying times. India's rising global profile is because of the several accomplishments. Unique world-class digital public infrastructure, example, Aadhaar, Coven and UPI. COVID vaccination drive in unparalleled scale and speed. Proactive role in frontier areas such as achieving the climate-related goals, mission life and national hydrogen mission. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we ensured that no one goes to bed hungry with a scheme to supply free food grains to over 80 crore persons for 28 months. Continuing our commitment to ensure food and nutritional security, we are implementing from 1st January 2023 a scheme to supply free food grain to all Antyodhya and priority households for the next one year under PM Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana, the e entire expenditure, the entire expenditure of about 2 lakh crore will be borne by the central government. In these times of global challenges, the G20 presidency gives us a unique opportunity to strengthen India's role in the world economic order. With the theme of Vasudeva Kutumbaka, we are steering an ambitious people-centric agenda to address global challenges and to facilitate sustainable economic development. The government's efforts since 2014 have ensured for all citizens a better quality of life and life of dignity. The per capita income has more than doubled to 1.97 lakh rupees. In these nine years, the Indian economy has increased in size from being 10th to 5th largest in the world. We have significantly improved our position as well as a well-governed and innovative country with a conducive environment for business as, as reflected in several global indices. 
we have made a significant progress in many sustainable development goals. The economy has become a lot more formalized as reflected in the EPFO membership, more than doubling to 27 crore and rupees 7,400 crore digital payments of 126 lakh crore rupees through UPI in 2022. The efficient implementation of many schemes with universalization of targeted benefits has resulted in inclusive development. Some of the schemes are 11.7 crore household toilets under Swachh Bharat Mission, which is achieved, 9.6 crore LPG connections under Ujwala, 220 crore COVID vaccination of 102 crore people, persons, 47.8 crore PM Jandan bank accounts, insurance cover for 44.6 crore persons under PM Suraksha Bhima and PM Jeevan Jyoti Yojana, and crash tra cash transfer of 2.2 lakh crores of rupees to 11.4 crore, to over 11.4 crore farmers under PM Kisan Samman Nidhi. Our vision for the Amritkal includes technology-driven and knowledge-based economy with strong public finances and a robust financial sector. To achieve this, Jan Bhagidari through Sapka Saad, Sapka Prayas is essential. The economic agenda for achieving this vision focuses on three things. First, facilitating ample opportunities for citizens, especially the youth, to fulfill their aspirations. Second, providing strong impetus to growth and job creation. And third, strengthening macroeconomic stability. To service these focus areas in our journey to India at 100, we believe that the following four opportunities can be transformative during Amritkal. Economic empowerment of women. <coughs> Deendayal Antyodhya Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission has achieved remarkable success by mobilizing rural women into 81 lakh self-help groups. We will enable these groups to reach the next stage of economic empowerment through formation of large producer enterprises or collectives, with each having several thousand members and managed professionally. They will be helped with raw materials supply, and for better design, quality, branding, and marketing of their products. Through supporting these policies, they will be enabled to scale up their operations to serve the large consumer markets, as has been the case with the several startups growing into unicorns. <coughs> PM Vishwakarma Kaushal Samman, PM Vikas, for centuries, Traditional artisans and craftspeople who work with their hands using tools have brought renown for India. They are generally referred to as Vishwakarma. The art and the handicraft created by them represents the true spirit of Atmanirbhar Bharat. For the first time, a package of assistance 